Hello friends, today let's look at the algorithm for serializing and deserializing a binary search tree. So the problem statement is, given a binary search tree or BST, how can you serialize and deserialize it? Let's first define what serialization is and what deserialization is. In serialization, the input is a binary tree and we are supposed to store the given tree in a file or in an array such that we should be able to recover the original binary tree from the input file or array, right? The deserialization is opposite or reverse of serialization where the input is a file or an array which stores the given tree and we need to reconstruct the original binary tree from the given input. So in serialization, input is a tree and output is a file or an array and in deserialization input is a file or an array and output is original binary tree now let's try to understand this using an example let's say our input is following binary search tree and we want to serialize it that is we want to store this binary search tree or bst in a file or an array let's see how we can do that now what we can do is we can do the pre-order traversal of this BST and store the pre-order traversal in an array. In pre-order traversal, first we visit the root node, then we visit the nodes in the left subtree and finally we visit the nodes in the right subtree, right? And this particular order of node visits that is root node followed by nodes in the left subtree followed by nodes in the right subtree is maintained for all subtrees right so the pre-order traversal for this bst will be first we visit the root node so node 5 will be visited first then we come to the left subtree which starts from node 2 now in the left subtree again we visit the root node first so that will be node 2 and then we go to the left subtree of node 2 left subtree of node 2 starts from node 1 we again follow this particular order root left right so root node that is node 1 will be visited right then there is nothing to the left and nothing to the right so left subtree for node 2 is done then we go to right subtree of node 2 which starts from node 3 again we try to follow root left right order so node 3 will be visited first left subtree of node 3 is null therefore we go to right subtree of node 3 which starts from node 4 so node 4 is visited now until this point we have visited node 5 2 1 3 4 5 2 1 3 4 now the left subtree for node 5 is done we go to right subtree of node 5 which starts from node 7 node 7 is visited then node 6 is visited right and finally node 8 is visited so the pre-order traversal for this binary search tree is this particular array right so we can call this array as a serialized form of given bst provided that we are able to recover the original binary search tree from this array now as you should be able to observe the serialization of bst is pretty straightforward we simply store a pre-order traversal or any traversal for that matter in an array provided that we are able to recover the original BST from the input array. Now let's look at the deserialization process given pre-order array as input. So for the deserialization our input is this particular array and we know that this is a pre-order traversal for a binary search tree and as we have already seen a pre-order traversal array is created by visiting the tree in root node followed by nodes in the left subtree followed by nodes in the right subtree style and this is done in recursive manner now knowing that the given input is pre-order traversal array what we can interpret is that node 5 must be the root node for original binary search tree why is that because in pre-order traversal array we are visiting the root node first right so node 5 must be the root node of the binary search tree that we want to reconstruct 
Now, some of the nodes in this preorder array would go into the left subtree of node 5, some nodes will go into the left subtree, right, and remaining nodes will go into the right subtree, will go into the right subtree. Now, how can we figure out as to which nodes will go in the left subtree and which nodes will go in the right subtree? Now, remember that this preorder traversal is for a binary search tree and in a binary search tree, all nodes in the left subtree have values less than root node value and all nodes in the right subtree have values greater than root node value. In this preorder traversal array, the root node is node 5, right? And nodes 2, 1, 3 and 4, nodes 2, 1, 3 and 4 have value less than 5, which is root node and remaining nodes that is 7, 6 and 8 have values greater than 5. Therefore, in the left subtree, nodes 2, 1, 3, 4 will be there and remaining nodes will be in the right subtree. Now to construct this left subtree and this right subtree completely, we again make use of these two rules. We call this as rule number 1 and this as rule number 2. So using these two rules, we construct the trees completely. Let's try to construct the left subtree first. In the left subtree, the pre-order traversal array that we have is 2, 1, 3, 4. Note that the array 2, 1, 3, 4 is pre-order traversal array for left subtree. Now, using the first rule, we know that node 2 will be the root node for left subtree, right? And using the second rule, what we know is node 1 will go into the left subtree for node 2, right? And nodes 3 and 4 will go into the right subtree for node 2. This is because we are constructing a binary search tree. Node 1 has value less than the root node which is node 2 and nodes 3 and 4 have values greater than node 2. Now coming to the left subtree of node 2, it has only one node in it. Therefore, left subtree construction is complete. Now we go to the right subtree of node 2. Right subtree has two nodes in it, node 3 and node 4. Using the first rule, what we can say is that node 3 will be the root node, right? Because this is pre-order traversal array for this particular subtree. And node 4 will be the right subtree for node 3. So the right subtree for node 2 will look like this, where node 3 forms the root node and node 4 is in the right subtree. Now, at this point, the left subtree for node 5 is completely constructed. Now we want to construct the right subtree for node 5. Right subtree has three nodes, node 7, 6 and 8. Again using the first rule, node 7 will form the root node of the right subtree because array 7, 6 and 8 is the pre-order traversal array for this particular right subtree. Now node 7 is the root node. Node 6 is less than root node, therefore it will form the left subtree of node 7 and node 8 which is greater than 7 will form the right subtree of node 7. Now at this point, reconstruction of right subtree is also complete and overall we have reconstructed the original binary search tree. The reconstructed original binary search tree is this particular tree. Now let's try to see as to how these ideas are used in an algorithm. So in this implementation, subroutine deserialize array implements the main algorithm. It takes argument as pre-order traversal array and it will also take argument as low index and high index. These indices basically indicate as to which portion of the pre-order array the subroutine deserialize array is looking at. For the very first call to deserialize array, the algorithm is supposed to look at the complete pre-order traversal array. Therefore, low index is 0 and high index is 7. This is for the first call to subroutine deserialize array. Note that 
index of 5 is 0 and index of 8 is 7. Now as we have seen in the previous slide, the root node is constructed from the very first element of the pre-order array. Note that we are looking at the portion of the pre-order array starting from low index and ending at high index. Therefore, the very first element of pre-order array will be located at low index, right? So root node is constructed from the very first element of the pre-order array. So in the first call to subroutine deserialize array, the root node will be constructed from the first element which is node 5 because low is 0. Now we need to construct the left subtree and right subtree for this node 5. We need to construct the left subtree and right subtree. How do we do that? We need to find out the portion of the pre-order array which will go into the left subtree and we need to find out the portion of the array which will go into the right subtree. To find out that what we do is we find out the index of the first element which is greater than root node. In this case that element would be 7. 7 is the first element from the left which is greater than root node. Once we find out this index, let's call this index as div index, right? So the subroutine find division, what it does is, it finds out the index of the first element from the left in the pre-order array, which is greater than root node. Let's call that index as div index. Once we find this div index, we can easily construct the left subtree and right subtree using recursive calls. For constructing the left subtree, what we do is, we pass the portion of the pre-order array starting at index low plus 1, right? So low plus 1 in this case will start from element 2. And for the left subtree, we pass the portion of the pre-order array which ends at div index minus 1. In this case, div index points to element 7 therefore div index minus 1 will point to element 4 right so for the left subtree we pass the portion starting from low plus 1 which is element 2 ending at div index minus 1 which ends at element 4 and the remaining portion which starts from div index and ends at index high which starts from div index and ends at index high is passed for constructing the right subtree. We are making these two recursive calls to recursively reconstruct the left subtree and right subtree. Finally, when the left and right subtrees are constructed completely, we return the root node. Now because this is a recursive algorithm, we need to define the base case of this algorithm. The base case would be that if the current portion of the pre-order array that the algorithm is looking into is completely empty that is if index low is greater than high which indicates that the current portion of the pre-order array is empty then we simply return null tree we simply return null tree so this particular step if low greater than high return null is the base case for this algorithm so this completes the explanation of this algorithm I hope the intuition behind this algorithm is clear now. For more such questions, you can visit our website www.idesire.co.in. Thank you and cheers.